Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now we have to look at one more effect. One more effect has to be studied. Now the, the gas that you use inside the envelope, it need not be pure gas. Because after all, it is a gas which comes from uh, any commercial establishment. It will have some impurity. So that also, that also is going to affect the uh, gross and then net lift. So, we define lifting gas purity Y. So, in any gas container, you will have the gas and air as the impurity. So, this factor Y is called as a purity factor. Now, typically airships are not operated when this factor falls below 90 percent. Some companies insist 95 percent from safety point of view. And when you start, you will never have 100 percent. It will be 99.7 percent, 99.5 percent, even when you have a fresh fill. And practically speaking, if there is a large envelope, it is very difficult to take out all the air from any gas bag. We have tried in our lab several times. Some amount of air always remains inside. Okay? Whatever suction pressure, etc., you use, some amount of air will always remain inside. Secondly, as the airship operates, this water vapor is actually a very small molecule and it also goes inside the envelope. It may not go at a very high rate, but it will go inside. The gas inside will also go out slowly with time. I told you 1 liter per square meter per day is considered to be a good good uh, material uh, property or acceptable material property. People are trying to make it lesser and lesser. So, some LTA gas will go out and some moisture will come inside the envelope. So, this purity will be lost over a period of time. So, Y will be volume occupied by pure lifting gas upon the total lifting gas volume. So, let us see. So, we just assume that you are putting gas with purity Y inside. So, the mass of the lifting gas will be equal to mass of the dry air which is the impurity. Now, do not try to bring in wet air also in this because that is going to complicate the thing further. Then you have to do calculations inside calculation. So, let us now assume that there is dry air which comes in and adds to the mass of the pure gas. So, now it is also a mixture. So, same thing will apply V of uh, Lg, volume of lifting gas into rho of Lg will be Vda into rho dA plus Vpg into rho Pg. Earlier we had Vw here, water vapor, Wv sorry. Now, you have pure gas and air. So, Anagat's law applies. So, the volume fractions will add up. So, volume of lifting gas will be volume occupied by the dry air plus volume occupied by the pure gas. There is at the container, they have some volume, total volume will be equal to the volume of each of them. So, therefore, volume of dry air is equal to volume of the lifting gas minus volume of the pure gas and you can then uh, put this in the expression and then you divide by VLG. So, you will get rho LG that is the uh, density of the lifting gas will be VLG minus VPG into rho DA plus VPG rho G upon VLG. Okay. So, I just copy it there. Now, VPG by VLG that is defined as the fraction volume of the uh, pure gas divide by volume of the total lifting gas. Lifting gas means gas 
which also contains air impurity. So, therefore, you can replace that by 1 minus y rho d a plus y rho p g. Now, p is equal to rho r t, you will get the same thing rho of pure gas and rho of dry air, you can relate it to the pressures, temperatures and using the same uh, law, you can relate it to pressures at the sea level, uh, standard conditions. So, therefore, rho L g that is density of the lifting gas. See, you need this number to calculate the net static lift. So, that will be equal to 1 minus y into rho 0 plus y rho p g 0 and then the terms will come from the ratio. So, now apply the same gas constant. So, rho is equal to r into d 0 where R d is a relative density. Again, you bring in the same concept of relative density. So, you replace rho P g 0 that is density of the pure gas under ISA conditions with relative density of the pure gas into the density at sea level condition. So, the same thing you bring it down to the sea level. So, you get a formula which gives you the value of density of lifting gas. Earlier, we got a similar formula for air and water vapor. Now, we have got a similar formula for lifting gas and air. Now, air is the impurity in this case. So, once again it will be inside, the value of y will be inside. So, just for your information, this, this will be available to you obviously. So, uh, the same formula comes here. We notice that the relative density of helium is 0 0.1382 and of hydrogen is 0 0.6995 compared to uh, the air. So, 1 minus will be also calculatable. So, you get two simple formulae for calculating the density of helium and density of the hydrogen gas. Now, finally, the last thing to be considered is called as super pressure and super heat. So, the ambient air will not uh, always be at the condition at the ambient at the, I mean the air the temperature of the lifting gas will not remain same as ambient air there will be some heat transfer over a period of time so if i take a balloon with the air in, with the gas inside keep it in the atmosphere after some time there will be heat transfer so the air inside will also get heated up now, how much time it takes that is a function of the property of the envelope material, but we assume that there is some temperature increase of the gas inside that is delta T S H. Similarly, the pressure of the balloon inside is not going to be kept same as pressure outside. We have to keep slight over pressure. Why? Because we need to have the envelope tight. If I have the pressure inside same as outside and if I move the balloon, the nose will bulge in. Okay. We have experienced this in one flight. If you observe carefully, one of my videos shows that the nose was bulging inside. So, therefore, pressure inside of the gas will also be more than the ambient by an amount delta P S P. This number is normally kept between 400 to 500 Newtons per meter square delta P it varies. Now, if you give more delta P, you are stretching the membrane also, the structure will also have problem. There will be more chance of tearing. If there are pin holes, they will open up. This is what happened in R101. The pin holes opened up. So, the formula then gets modified by the P S will become P S plus delta P S P and T S will become T A plus delta T S H. And with that, you can calculate the lifting gas weight. Now, the lifting gas weight is what? Minus the balloon. So, you just put I into V and V, you get the lifting gas. So, the same formula will now be uh, created with the value of I. So, you just have I into K, uh, V and V outside for weight of lifting gas. Now, just two simple cases before we wind up. One is assume pure lifting gas. So, no y is equal to 
1, no superheat, no super pressure, simple expression. ISA conditions and no superheat, P will be equal to directly related to uh, rho will be related to the values and from there you can get the value of uh, the gas as well as weight. Now I already mentioned to you that uh, the water vapor contamination takes place. Okay. Gas molecule is very, very, very small. In fact, water molecule is much smaller than nitrogen and oxygen, so it permeates much better. Now, this I will skip right now. Basically, it is just a question of if you. So basically, the idea is the effect of effect of uh, the atmospheric air coming in is like the effect of humidity. Okay. So this is one problem which I would like you to do. Now I don't want to do it. We don't have time. Okay. This is something which I would like you to note down and I will call it as a homework problem rather than a tutorial problem. So I am going to put this on Moodle page. Okay. So no need to copy it down, it will come on the Moodle page. So this will take care of everything that you have seen today, altitude, ISA plus 15, helium purity, inflation fraction, super pressure, super heat, humidity. Under all these effects, what is the lifting gas calculation? Okay. <laughs>